so good. Enjoy learning things from YouTube. <laughs> That's a great plug, dude. It's so dumb. Whoa, should this dinosaurs be unbanned with casually totally sponsored explained? by Skillshare? <laughs> hey, Tier Zoo's here. He says, chat. He says, hey, nice dinner. Y'all better subscribe. Hey, man, fucking huge fan of your content. It's incredible. We've been watching it since yesterday. Very good. If you ever want to do one on like um, political factions as like clans or whatever, hit me up. I, I already did an impromptu one yesterday. I'm subscribed as well, so. I wouldn't touch political content with a nine and a half foot pole. Thanks, though. That's so YouTube, brother. Yo, see, that's... Man, the YouTube meta is very different than Twitch. At Twitch, people are no longer apprehensive about touching politics, but on YouTube, it's still a fucking far right infested cesspool full of like Nazis and shit. And most of the dominant content creators on the platform are like weirdos like Ben Shapiro and shit. So it's like, it's, it's, that's the reason why so many content creators on YouTube are risk averse. Like fucking Tim Pool, people think he's a liberal, you know what I mean? Anyway. And if you're not that, you're bread tube. Breath of the Wild speedrun? Dude, why do you want me to watch the fucking speedrun of the game I'm playing right now? One of the See, this is why, this is why the YouTube, uh, the, this is why fucking talking politics on YouTube is so stupid. Even mentioning politics, even mentioning politics it brings out some fucking morons being like, Ugh, Ben Shapiro is so smart. Yeah, if you're stupid as fuck. <clears throat> anyway, let's keep going. Most controversial balance updates the devs have ever introduced was patch 1.3.1. And by the way, I didn't mean like political. I meant like, um, you know, the US guild, like rolling over other guilds and different servers and shit like that. The update but it's, which it's banned fine, and the vast majority of dinosaurs, marine reptiles, and pterosaurs. And so it should come as no surprise that one of the requests. Excuse me, and Cody Cody reacts to this? Okay, well. So that the devs get the most is to reintroduce dinosaurs back into the game. The devs have never unbanned any classes before. But what would the meta look like if the devs actually obliged and allowed players to spawn as dinosaurs again? Well, to answer that question, we first need to understand why dinosaurs were banned in the first place. And believe it or not, I was actually given the opportunity to ask one of the devs this very question. So a lot of people have been wondering, why were the dinosaurs banned? Uh, you know, I get this question a lot because the dinosaur class was one of the most popular in the history of the game, and we definitely got a lot of pushback when you released the first Extinction Pack. But to be honest, the meta was just getting stale, especially with players opting to play larger and larger land carnivores like the T-Rex. Like, one balance update, we tried to buff herbivores by putting two additional horns on the Uniceratops, but of course the T-Rex players just specced into higher attack. Then one time we even tried to nerf the rage ability of the T-Rex players by increasing the frequency they want to engage in sexual behavior, but then players thought it would be funny to shorten their arms. So eventually we figured it's not worth dealing with all these complications and we should just go for the hard reset, lower the oxygen levels to limit the size wars of different classes, and encourage more nuanced skill trees. And while we are seriously considering a dinosaur remaster due to popular demand, to be honest, even now, if you look at most character models, they're just shrunk down, reskinned dinosaurs we put fur on so you couldn't tell. Thanks so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to comment on this matter. Okay, so what would it look like if dinosaurs were unbanned? First, let's talk about dinosaurs in general. The dinosaur build's main advantage is its mass. I guess that makes it less embarrassing that um, the otherwise OP uh, S-class human beings in the history of the late game have only gotten owned by one group of animals and that's of course in the australia server as we talked about yesterday by the emu 
but considering that they are alongside kangaroos, also descendants of dinosaurs, that makes it very different. of size. At fully grown, the only things that could take it down were other giant dinosaurs and potentially pack hunting builds. While size is an advantage on defense, it can be a challenge for overall survivability. Dinosaurs require a massive amount of food, potentially more than the current game could provide. And so if the devs were to unban dinosaurs, they'd likely also need to buff the spawn rates of pretty much everything. Your average dinosaur build also tends to be pretty modest when it comes to speed and intelligence. Having speed comparable to an elephant and intelligence comparable to crocodiles. Not to be annoying, but are you going to play more Breath of the Wild? Just curious. Yes, man. I'm fucking almost done, dude. I'm almost done. Can I? This, this is the last video. Okay, I, will, I promise you I'm getting back to Breath of the Wild. Just curious, Andy's. This means that most of the current top tiers will outspeed and outsmart them on a regular basis. Yoink. But this isn't the case for all dinosaurs, so let's get into the specifics now. Let's start with the herbivores. So I don't think hadrosaurs would be very viable at all, seeing as they have no good defensive abilities to protect themselves with. I love how Their much best you guys trait the is game. that they can communicate effectively and keep watch over each other. But the best hunters today rely on stealth, a strategy specifically meant to get around this problem. Hadrosaurs would be great at spotting tall carnivore players from far away, but not stealthy builds that stayed low to the ground and moved through the bush. Now you might be thinking, oh that's no problem, the herbivores could just outrun them, but large herbivores had much lower mobility than today's top predator builds. They'd be most comparable to an elephant like I said before, but where elephants lack in mobility, they'd make up for with intelligence. You can't say the same for dinosaurs. But not all herbivores would be in such a bad position. Hadrosaurs lack any form of weaponry, but other herbivores are much more well-armed. Triceratops is perhaps the most well-known armed herbivore, and it's easy to see why. At full Damn, speed, these dudes a Triceratops get owned, can huh? one-shot even the tankiest of opponents. But with that said, the carnivore player base has gotten much better at dealing with front-facing weapons like horns and tusks. So Triceratops may find itself struggling to fend off attacks that come from behind or come from multiple angles. Getting behind an opponent has become a staple trick of every carnivore's playbook, especially for canine and feline builds. Sauropods were at an interesting place in the meta back during the Mesozoic, and would definitely still be if they were brought back today. Their late game stats were simply impossible to beat one-on-one. -on -one. No other land build has ever achieved even close to the same base stat total. Even the top predators of the time barely stood a chance, even in teams. But they only reached this potential in the late game and have relatively few- Flawless dot run? Who's that? What is that? Thank you, Flawless Dot Run. I don't know if it's a fake raid or not, or if it's a real raid or not, but, um... Fuck Breath of the Wild, more React Andersonian? No, no, fuck React Andersonian. Dude, dude, listen, man. Listen, I gotta say something. Bro, y'all eat every fucking day, dude. Dudes who love coming in here to, to, like, watch me react to shit, like, you eat literally every day. You eat nonstop. You understand? You know who fucking stays hungry, dude? You know who starves on these fucking streets? The gamer frogs, okay? They literally sit there quietly and wait for me to play a fucking video game day in, day out without fucking crying about it at all. Meanwhile, literally a moment goes, we, we go over like two hours without fucking watching a YouTube video and you lose your mind immediately. You're like, no, 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 let's do reacts. Fuck off. No longer, no more. Defensive options during early and mid game, aside from just relying on high level teammates. This means that their teammates need to be able to stop an attack before it's too late. Because of their extreme height, predators would just about never be able to sneak up on a sauropod clan in an open field. But approaching using stealth isn't the only way to catch a vigilant opponent off guard. Hiding in trees is another option, one that's employed by some of the most powerful builds of present day. Big cats tend to target the neck of their opponents. And, well, it would be pretty hard to miss. Even the top tier jaguar probably couldn't one-shot a high-level sauropod, but all of the arboreal big cats would definitely be a problem for juveniles. Potentially so problematic that not enough of them would be able to reach the late game to defend the lower level players. It's hard to say. Overall, they could be completely viable or completely helpless. Not much in between. In my opinion, the herbivore builds best suited to survive in the current meta would be the ones with tail weapons, specifically stegosaurs and ankylosaurs. 
As previously mentioned, the top Predator builds tend to attack from behind, avoiding a face-to-face -face confrontation, and staying out of range of being hit by counterattacks with horns, tusks, and bites. This strategy works great against the tanky herbivore classes of present day, but an attack from behind would be an awful idea against a build with a club or thagomizer. In addition, the armor on their back would make it much harder for assassin builds like big cats to land their critical strikes. Of all of the herbivores, I find these to be the most likely to become top tier if they were unbanned. Now onto the carnivores. So this might be- Th Thank you. Let's get to the fucking fun stuff, dude. Let's see. In unpopular opinion, but I don't think large Tyrannosaurs would fare well in the current meta. Tyrannosaurs are min-maxed to optimize for damage, which was great when their goal was to be able to bring down tanks with HP levels as high as the dinosaurs. The only build of present day that this would be important to have against would be the elephant. And while that is important, having only one good matchup is not a top tier strategy. All elephant players would need to do to counter this specific tactic is spec into slightly higher mobility, since the T-Rex's top speed is extremely low compared to builds of present day. Smaller Tyrannosaurus like Albertosaurus and Despletosaurus would still be viable though. They're literally too OP. They're one, they can one shot every animal when it doesn't even matter. Since they haven't sacrificed as much mobility as the T-Rex has, mobility really is the name of the game for predators right now. And it's the reason that I'd put Dromaeosaurs like Velociraptor and Deinonychus as the best contenders for being too OP for the current meta. And not just because of their excellent mobility, but also because they really wouldn't need to adjust much from their playstyle in the Cretaceous. Raptor builds in the Cretaceous preyed mostly on small animals like prehistoric mammals, and occasionally banded together to take down midweight and heavyweight builds. This niche is still very much available today, and raptors would have little trouble in combat versus builds like possums, raccoons, and birds. This is the same role that the fox and coyote occupy right now. So the question then becomes, could raptors compete with them? In one-on-one -on -one combat, I do think raptors have the edge. While raptors do have lower HP than any canine, they also have much more burst damage potential. Canines use the persistence hunting strategy and need to land several attacks in order to bring down a target. Raptors, on the other hand, deal much higher damage because of their sickle claw that can potentially one-shot an enemy. Both employ team strats, and both have high mobility and intelligence. So all else being equal, the ability for raptors to out-damage the canines would, in my opinion, win them the day. So overall, if individual dinosaur builds were unbanned, the Stegosaurs, Ankylosaurs, and Dromaeosaurs would most likely be top tier, while the others might end up struggling. Dinosaur players would need to learn a lot okay. of new abilities to be able to- You stop hugging right now, motherfucker. You know I, I see it. No, I'm just kidding, okay?